My name is Victor Dume. I'm going to be your host for the evening. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> Uh, and I'm from sunny, beautiful Lewiston, Maine. <laughs> yeah, people don't usually clap for that part. <laughs> One time a lady in the back, she was like, aww. <laughs> I was like, hey, at least it's not... Damn it! <laughs> I haven't always lived here. Uh, I've lived away for a few years, and I, I kept in touch with people back home. I, uh, these are some things that people from Lewiston say on the phone. Oh yeah, we found we found this new place. We really love it. No, 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 no bed bugs. <laughs> I'll say. Uh, well. Guess we missed the balloon festival again. <laughs> I'll say, uh, yeah, I, I remember that place. Yeah, I think it's a weed store now. <laughs> I, uh, I reached a personal milestone recently, a small one, but, uh, but it was real. I just bought my second ever can of shaving cream. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I'm 31 years old. <laughs> so obviously they don't make the stuff that I've been using since high school <laughs> anymore. So I had to buy something new, and it, uh, it smells exactly like Axe body spray. <laughs> That's not the weird part. The weird part is how much my girlfriend loves it. Because <laughs> apparently she's a 13-year-old punk rock princess. <laughs> Which, once you get into it, actually explains the clove cigarettes and all the little bottles of blackberry vodka that I find around the house. <laughs> At least some emo kids in the crowd. <laughs> familiar with this? Yeah. Uh, I'm kidding about that, by the way. Uh, she's not 13. My girlfriend, <laughs> my girlfriend is a grown-up, like me, despite my face. And uh, we actually just moved in together fairly recently. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> no, it was, a, it was a small milestone, right? Yeah, we, we moved in together, which is really when I realized that this girl is just a total keeper. Wait. <laughs> no, that's not it. Hoarder. <laughs> Hoarder's the word. So if anybody's looking for about five identical casserole dishes, 13 years of Vogue magazine, or two completely useless children, <laughs> yeah, apparently we're not selling. <laughs> Just got a dog for my kid, actually, so uh, so he could learn some responsibility. From watching me take care of him. <laughs> uh, second half here. <laughs> Whenever I lose a sock. I always keep the survivor, just in case I have a mishap at sea. <laughs> I only need one from then on. That's a peg leg joke. <laughs> Glad you guys were into it. It's a risky one. <laughs> I also had a moment of redemption recently, another tiny milestone in my life. I was doing some adult stuff, some grown-up stuff, with a power tool. <laughs> and my father held the flashlight for me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the pathetic incompetent now? <laughs> you see, Dad, because what I need you to do is I, I need you to shine a light on what I'm working on, not on my hands while I do it. <laughs> what, what are you even pointing at? What are, what are you, daydreaming? <laughs> I didn't get to say any of those things. <laughs> Man did a spectacular job. <laughs> I did, however, get to enjoy a silent passing of the torch. No. Oh. Oh. 
Because British people, they call flashlights torches. Mm -hmm. <laughs> take Sorry, right, that's okay. We'll, we'll keep moving. <laughs> Something that's been on my mind recently. I've been thinking about it. Who is it who does the embroidery on the patches for motorcycle gangs? <laughs> is it one of the gang members? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. One of the, the brothers. <laughs> Brother. Brother. Yeah, one of those. Does every motorcycle gang just keep one wimpy guy with really nimble fingers? <laughs> like, nah, Leroy don't ride. <laughs> but the man can chain stitch a bloody skull like he wouldn't believe. <laughs> it's immaculate. <laughs> or they just, they just wait in line at Caps On with everybody else, like with, with the Little League coaches? <laughs> Like, yeah, I'm here, I'm here to pick up an order for old Janky. <laughs> no, it's not. It uh, should be two dozen, uh, uh, should be two dozen flaming penis crucifixes. <laughs> <laughs> Next week? Okay. <laughs> Next week is good. Good game this week, coach. <laughs> Watch out for that when you're leaving. <laughs> <laughs> While I have a few minutes up here, I would like to uh, take this opportunity to take the moral high ground real quick. We as Americans, I think, really need to take some time to reflect. We need to look at ourselves honestly and think, who are the people who we're holding down? You know? Who are the people who we're holding back? Who are the people who give the most and get the least. It should be obvious that I am talking about magicians. <laughs> How twisted is our social order that your average magician gets less respect than your average bartender? Hmm. Hmm. We all like drinks. I get it. But the man is a damn wizard. <laughs> a bartender can help you drown your sorrows. That's true. Magicians don't drown! <laughs> a bartender can mix up a magical potion that will make your wife very horny. <laughs> yes, good trick. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> a magician, on the other hand, can make your mistress Disappear. <laughs> A bartender can make your money disappear. That is another good trick. That is a good one. They're good at it. Got to give them that. All Morlock over here needs is two fingers and a child's ear, and he can literally create money. <laughs> Out of thin air. 50 cent piece. <laughs> Keep that for later. Two gumballs. Welcome. I'm not saying I have any problem with bartenders. I don't. In fact, I'm going to try my own magic trickle in a few minutes here. I'm going to go over there. I'm going to try to order a drink after telling this joke. <laughs> if I can get served. <laughs> no, what I am saying is that I think that we are wasting a valuable resource. And we're wasting them on what? On Las Vegas and birthday parties? Come on, people, let's think about this. There are opportunities here, right? What about economics, right? Who's better at dealing with inflation than a party entertainer? Animal balloons. <laughs> You take these gas prices, you twist me up a monkey, Merlin. I'm gonna ride that to work. <laughs> what about conflict? <laughs> There's a war going on over there in Europe. 
Don't you think Anne Frank would have been a little more comfortable if she could have sawed herself in half? And what about tip shows? <laughs> Hardly there's not a lot that a magician can do about tip shows, but there is something that you can do when you come to a tip show, and that's don't leave right at the end. Don't leave as soon as we finish. We are going to pass around a tip jar at the end. We appreciate your generosity. Um, which brings me to my next trick. <laughs> Coming up to the stage next, uh, all the way from Portland, Oregon, is the talented Marla Massey. Thanks, everybody. <sighs> yeah, let's get the ethnic portion of tonight's programming underway. I'm the diversity hire. Oh my god, affirmative action, comedian, no? It's okay. <laughs> My name's Marla. Uh, I, I came here all the way from Portland, Oregon, and, uh, wow. eh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you know, it's not, I mean, I, I like it there, but it's not always kombucha and white privilege. You know, there's, there's other things I like about that city. I like the fact that there are food carts that stay open all fucking night, so after ingesting copious amounts of edibles, I could just walk up to the poke place and be like, <laughs> uh, the the slamming is a salmon bowl. Salmon, salmon, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Throw some avocados on it, bitch. How's everybody doing? Are you guys okay? Uh, so I live in Portland, Oregon, right now, but I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio. Now, do, do not. Ask me if I know LeBron, all right? That's the first fucking thing that people say to me when I tell them I'm from Cleveland. They're like, oh, you know LeBron? Do you know LeBron James? You know King James? I'm like, okay, um, first of all, he's from Akron, which is 30 minutes outside of Cleveland. And secondly, are you asking me this because we're both from the same area or is it because we're both black? <laughs> and no cap, I actually do know LeBron James. <laughs> I went to a Catholic high school and he went to a Catholic high school too. His school came to my school, totally wiped the floor with our school's basketball team. And everybody at my school was like, oh my God, LeBron's the greatest. He's so cute. He's so tall. He's so... I'm like, look, LeBron James is not going to become the next number 23. He's not going to get a deal with Nike. He's definitely not going to join the Cleveland Cavaliers. So... Yeah, junior year, all of that shit had happened. <laughs> Who's the multimillionaire now? Him, not me. I'm flying across the country from one Portland to the next and doing shows in you know, dilapidated speakeasies. Um, <laughs> Anybody in here married or in a relationship? Yeah. You didn't, that was not a happy woo. I was so not happy. I, uh, like, I, so it's great. It, marriage was clearly not for me. It was not for me. Um, I had to think about the last time I saw my ex-husband and we're in divorce court, right? I'm filing paperwork, cross my T's, dotting my eyes. And this man had the audacity to look at me and say, I'm so fucking glad this shit's over. You were like a splinter to me. You got underneath my skin and you're painful to deal with. I'm so fucking glad this is over. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm a splinter. Okay, well you are a Sauvignon Blanc. And before I could finish, this man turned to the judge and was like, oh, a Sauvignon Blanc, she's saying that because I've aged like a fine wine. And I'm like, no man, I'm saying that because you leave a dry chalky taste in my mouth and you're white, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what the lovings fought for in 67, man. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, we were married for three years 
and together for six, and I've known him for 15 years. That's an incredibly long time to know somebody. And you know, you see the red flags, but you know, I'm a Virgo, I'm hard-headed, I thought I could change him. Uh, <laughs> did not work. I mean, it, it, it wasn't the fact that like, he hated that I did stand-up comedy, and then there was the one time he tricked me into doing meth, but no, the biggest red flag, <laughs> The biggest red flag in our entire marriage was that we met on MySpace. <laughs> Why do you think our mutual friend Tom is sitting there smiling like that? He's like, <laughs> you're <chick's book." laughs> and, and the thing about marriage, marriage is a lot of work. It's a lot of give and a lot of take. Like he would give me headaches and I would just take it all the time. Like just for no reason. Was, his favorite thing was to argue with me over what he liked to call my Reckless and impulsive spending habits? <laughs> the fuck does that mean? Anybody? Does any? Okay, raise your hand in here if you're gainfully employed. You have a job. You have a job, you can spend your money however you want. Spend your money however you want. You can spend your money however you want. Cool. So if I want to spend $692.17 at PetSmart, I can, right? Yeah. <laughs> Wrong. The cat was the only black pussy he will pay attention to for three straight months. <laughs> Should probably let you guys know I have a little black cat at home. Uh, I love this cat. He's my schmoopty pie. I love him to death. I, uh, I named him T'Challa because he looks like a little black panther, and I'm in a Marvel household. Fuck DC, all right? Uh, my husband did not like that name. He goes, T'Challa? I don't like that name. I wanted to name him Baby Cakes. I'm like, first of all, your name is Joe. Shut up. <laughs> He didn't like Shadow, didn't like Midnight, definitely didn't like little black ass niggas, so we suffered <laughs> out And it was fine. <laughs> I... <sighs> I don't understand. I don't understand why men could be so confusing. Men, there's enough of you. There's enough of you in this room. Why are you guys weird? <laughs> why do you do the dumb shit that you do? Um, okay, listen. So... <laughs> I had to leave the house, I had to go to the post office, right? I had to go to the post office to pick up a package, and as I'm halfway down the stairs, I'm like, oh shit, I forgot my, my little mail-in form. I go upstairs, I am opening up my own bedroom door, and my now ex-husband is just, oh shit, what are you doing here? The fuck you mean, what am I doing here, nigga? I live here! What are you doing? Get ready for a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, what kind of nap involves aggressive dick jerking? What? <laughs> <laughs> what in the Ted Bundy bullshit are you doing? <laughs> this is not what I meant when I told you to go fuck yourself, all right? <laughs> whoever I want. Granted, I was doing that shit when I was married too, but now I don't feel bad about it. And that means I can have sex with whoever I want, with anybody I want. I'm an equal opportunity player, man. Right. But um, now that I am not like restricted to like doing constant, like, the constant things that white people like to do. There's enough of you in this room so I can talk, we can have an open and honest discussion about why certain activities you find, what's that white ass word, enthralling? <laughs> why do you go camping? Why? I don't like that shit. Does a bear shit in the woods? Probably, I don't wanna find out. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> fruit picking. My ex mother in law tried to convince me to go to Geneva, Ohio, to do picking for want for grapes for wine. She goes, Marla, we're gonna go and we're gonna pick grapes and make our own wine. You wanna come? No, Jan. <laughs> you really think that me, a black woman, is gonna go out into an open field surrounded by white people and start picking agriculture? <laughs> Bunch of white people like, oh wow, she's really good. What's wrong with her? I'm doing that shit. Also, if I have to watch another Wes Anderson movie, I will fucking scream.
mean? Uh, no, all mean. No, no, I mean. I've seen the life aquatic and I've seen the royal tenant bomb. Just fucking say you like Bill Murray, all right? I fucked with Bill Murray. He and I have the same birthday. Oh. Ha-ha. That, no, that's all I had to say about that. <laughs> a dating profile on Tinder, and that was a fucking mistake. Tinder needs to rename itself as Swipe White. There's a lot of Caucasian men on that app. Do you know what it's like having to swipe left 35 times before you find a brother on that app and you look closer and it's your actual brother? <laughs> you swipe left another 35 times. Holy shit. Awkward. <laughs> Man, he is on his profile said he was 6'4, yeah. 200 pounds, jet black hair, green eyes, and he told me that he thought I was the most beautiful woman he'd ever seen on this app. That was a lie. That is a that's a fucking straight up lie. You telling me that there's bitches out there that look like Rihanna and you're telling me I'm the most beautiful woman that you've ever seen? Get the fuck out of here. But I needed my ego stroke, so I went to his profile. And you know, after reading his stats, I, I decided to read what was actually in his profile and that well, it was a mess. Uh, it was a mess. Because in big, bold letters, and I don't even know how you can put bold letters in your Tinder profile, it said, I love chocolate women and had six candy bar emojis <laughs> and various female faces of different brown shades looking like the cover of a Drake album. <laughs> Red flags are plenty. I know. So, um, I, I, I was like, ooh, so I sent a message back to him. I'm like, hey man, thanks for uh, your, your kind, very sweet words. But um, if you want some chocolate, please take yourself to CVS or Walgreens and get yourself a Snickers, because you're not you when you're hungry. And I'm not that type of snack. Blocked! All right, guys, thank you so much. This has been so much fun. Marla Massey. Marla, I just want to let you know, uh, since you asked, about 85% of naps. <laughs> uh, thanks, everybody. Let's keep it rolling. Uh, coming up next to the stage is Sarah Karen. <laughs> I don't even know anymore, Vic, I'll be honest with you. How's everybody doing? Yeah. You know what occurred to me the other day? We were going into our junior year of COVID, you guys. Yep, one more year and we're going to graduate. Sophomore year was rough. Some of us dropped out. <laughs> Mostly the seniors. <laughs> but you know what junior year means? It's safe to have sex again. <laughs> yeah, I did some fun stuff during COVID. I got a divorce too, Marla. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> it's all right, it's all right. I mean, I had a beautiful 20 year marriage. We have a lovely friendship. We have a great kid. And I have to say all of that because it's in the settlement agreement. <laughs> and my divorce attorney is here. And she will tell you that's true. <laughs> yeah, she's laughing. No, she really is here. <laughs> uh, yeah, a more difficult transition for me, though, has actually been that my gynecologist retired. Oh my god, mine too! Oh shit, no way! Is it Dr. Andrews? Yes! <laughs> is that the two men who've been looking at my vagina for the last 20 years have both moved on to greener pastures. <laughs> you guys, what do gynecologists do when they retire? Live a happy and love I think they finger paint. <laughs> it's hard to break the habit. <laughs> Maybe cave exploration. <laughs> Gross, who said that? 
<laughs> Some yeah, major transitions. So divorce, uh, new gynecologist this year, which is it's all right. Um, but it, my therapist also uh, was like, hey, I don't think there's any more I can do for you. <laughs> really? What does that say about me fundamentally as a person? <laughs> this is it. This is all we've got. All right. Well. <laughs> I'll work with it, but it really isn't helping with my abandonment issues, Andrea, I have to admit. <laughs> we'll move on, it's fine. <laughs> so this, yeah, so this year I'm, I'm dating, I'm trying it out. Um, it's okay, uh, I don't understand it though, it's different now, because 20 years ago, um, the last person I dated actually had a pager. He wasn't a doctor, a drug dealer, or a pimp, he just was special. <laughs> Yeah, so it's different now. Um, technology is odd. Um, Marla was talking about Tinder. I haven't tried that. I did try to set up a dating profile on Facebook, though. Don't. Facebook is very useful. Um, I wasn't really sure how to describe myself, though. I mean, I feel like your ex is actually the right person. <laughs> right? They'll just lay it all out there, and then you don't have to, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I think if I were to design my own dating profile, it would be like my physical attributes yeah. that I find quirky. So for instance, I'm six feet tall, which in itself is, is odd for a woman, but also I have a really tiny head. Yeah, and little feet, right? So I feel like you add inappropriate footwear and alcohol and you have a recipe for disaster. Yeah. It's like if someone gave a draft too much booze. <laughs> Wrinkly, volatile. You should know that before you date, right? You should know that about me before you date. I feel like it's an important thing to know. Yeah. I do have an actual recipe for disaster. It's a dash of I don't care and two cups of nobody died. It's called I don't give a shit. And you can follow me on Pinterest for more recipe ideas. That's right. Yes. Yeah, so uh, dating in, is weird. The dick pic thing, I don't get. <laughs> right? Are we in favor? No. no. Because if a woman my age gets a dick pic, the only thing we're thinking about is how, if you're going to send me a picture of sausage, it had better be next to a mimosa. <laughs> because a 45-year-old white woman just wants to go to brunch. <laughs> Nothing to do with that. Keep it away from us. It's gross. <laughs> you should also know, if you date me, that, have you guys heard of um, RBF before? Yeah. I don't have that. <laughs> yeah, I have something else, something I like to call resting retail face. <laughs> yeah, so no matter where I am, I look like I work there. <laughs> I don't know where the light bulbs are, but Marsha, I will help you find them. <laughs> Let's go ask someone who does work here. <laughs> it, does anybody else have that? I feel like it's just like one of those things where you're like just super friendly and outgoing and people are like, why not? <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've got my set list on my hand. Um, <laughs> now you know. <laughs> Uh, I am, so I am uh, a, an adult with an adult child. He'll be 18. Yeah, I know, Ooh. weird, right? But all of my friends are having babies. Oh. I know, gross. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Yuck, babies. I'm too old for that. This uterus is all dried up. <laughs> it's okay. You should know that too. Um, <laughs> But my friends recently had a baby and they named her Barbara. Oh. Oh. Right? Now, I, don't get me wrong, I have no problem with the name Barbara. It's a lovely name if you're 70 years old. <laughs> no? Am I not wrong? You don't name a baby Barbara. <laughs> baby Barbara? <laughs> Barbara works in human resources. Yes. <laughs> yeah, she drives a Suburban. <laughs> and all three of her kids play soccer. <laughs> Barbara is not a baby name. Barbara's married to Gary. <laughs> right? <laughs> Gary was born with a 401k in stock <laughs> And a receding hairline. <laughs> and a dad bod at the age of five. <laughs> I know. Poor Gary. 
Barely. <laughs> Don't feel too bad for Barbara, though, because she's boinking Bruce from IT. <laughs> he seems super boring, but he has a porn stash and a boat. <laughs> so Barbara's punching up. It's all good. Uh, I find that I spend too much time on Facebook these days. I did find something recently that I found very useful there, though. Did you know that Facebook tells you when it's time to delete a friend? Uh, no. No. It's called birthday reminders. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Every day, you get a list of people you don't really know. <laughs> and you can make a decision. You can choose to wish them a happy birthday. Or you can kick a bitch out. <laughs> you don't need all those people on your Facebook friends. That's too many people. If you don't care that it's Barbara's birthday, bye Barbara. Right? Yeah. So I've also discovered something about myself. Uh, much like Victor's girlfriend, it turns out that I am a hoarder. <laughs> I know this because I was sorting my bras the other day. 64 bras. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Between the everyday bras, which just are normal, and sports bras for the gym, and then the fancy bras that nobody sees because dating is stupid. <laughs> 64 bras. Yeah. And I imagine what that episode of Hoarders was going to look like, right? They're going to interview my neighbors. <laughs> They're going to be pulling out like cat carcasses. They're going to be wrapped up in the straps. <laughs> Little mice making hammocks out of the cups. Right? My neighbors will be interviewed and they'll be like, she was always so perky. We had no idea anything was wrong. If we had known, we would have given her more support. So I, I, I'm not being honest with you. I have gone on a couple of dates. It's, uh, it's hard not to, because um, you get a little lonely, and you sort your bras. <laughs> so I went out with a guy, and we, were, we had just ordered our dinner, and he looked at me and he said, you don't seem like the kind of woman who would order a cheeseburger. Uh, what does she look like, you guys? <laughs> you know who I do look like? I look like the kind of girl who says she's going to the bathroom and then doesn't come back. <laughs> She's adorable. <laughs> One good date I had though was a, was a <laughs> day drinking <laughs> and yoga. Oh, oh, right? that's fun. You would think so. <laughs> but the only position I really mastered was the one night stand. <laughs> he preferred the downward dog, you guys. And in the end, we we're both like, namaste. <laughs> yeah, just praying it's not a child's pose. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I've been here. Sarah's last name is Poolin. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure you guys knew that. In case you ever post tonight. <laughs> I now also know why Sarah and I have become Facebook friends three years in a row. <laughs> the month of September. Uh, our next comic is coming from uh, either Worcester or Boston. He wasn't too, super clear about that. His name is Zach Valencia. In the tween bowl. In the tween bowl. What's up, guys? How you doing? That's a good friend. You guys are great. You guys are awesome up here in Auburn. I've never been to Auburn, Maine. I've never been to this place. Do love doing comedy in a fucking cave. <laughs> Pretty nice. They got the caveman paintings, too. <laughs> You think those are from that time? Are they from that? Oh, all right. No, look, I know, uh, I know that I look like if Matt Damon and Jeffrey Dahmer had a kid. <laughs> yeah, I'll let it soak, let it soak for a sec. It's me. So, uh, no, a little bit about myself. I drive for DoorDash sometimes. Anybody else here? 
Anyone else try for No, I'm the only poor and skillless one. Uh, uh, yeah, you, I do these at open mics sometimes. A lot of dashers at open mics. You know, like, uh, skillless people. No, do I for DoorDash? I like, to, I like to think of it as being like a legal drug dealer, right? Yeah, we both drive around all day, deliver stuff to people. Drug dealers do some of the drugs they deal. I eat some of the food I deliver. <laughs> Very similar, very similar job. I usually, I usually door dash at night. I'm a nighttime guy, but there are really two parts of the night for a door dash driver. You got dinner time, then later on you got drug addict time. It gets a little sketchy. It gets a little sketchy. Dinner time is easy. Best case scenario, big house, big tip. Worst case scenario, you forget scary Karen's salad at the restaurant. <laughs> Don't fuck with Karen when she's making dinner. Drug addict time's a little different. Best case scenario, 50 cent tip. Worst case scenario, I maybe try crack and move in with them. It's, it's, it's me I don't trust, not that. Right? But the, uh, the druggies, they'll forget what's going on sometimes. They forget, you gotta remind them. You gotta go in slow. I point to the bag, I'm like, DoorDash, remember? <laughs> I like to get low, let them know I'm not a threat. DoorDash, remember? It's 2 a.m., you ordered the solo medium fry from McDonald's. DoorDash, you gotta go slow with the crackheads, right? They're like scared horses, you gotta lay them down a little bit, make them feel safe, they'll eventually accept. Nah, no, DoorDash is a weird job. I, I work a lot of weird jobs. Like, I love weird jobs. For a while, I was working part-time at the Amazon warehouse, right? But I had to quit. I had to. You know what it's like to have two jobs that disappoint your parents? <laughs> DoorDash and Amazon, just going, throwing, I'm trying stand-up comedy. We got what's called a silent household. <laughs> When I was working at Amazon, a lot of people would ask me, they'd say, uh, hey, if you see my package, can you grab it for me? <laughs> hey, uh, just fucking wait. <laughs> it's two days shipping, it's not that bad. <laughs> Even if I did see your package, what do you want me to do? Call you up when I get out of work? <laughs> hey, I know it's two in the morning, but you want those wine glasses you ordered? <laughs> They say it's wine time on it. Wasn't sure. Do you need those right now? At two in the morning. Is it wine time right now? Just fucking wait, man. Uh, Amazon was a weird job. Like it was brutal. It was brutal. They had one good thing though. It was this thing called VTO, voluntary time off. Basically, if it was a slow day, there weren't many packages. They would yell out VTO, and a few people could go home. I loved it. I would shove the 58-year-old widow working. At <laughs> running over, elbowing people up in the conveyor belt. I want it, it's mine, I was here first. And everybody else would look at me very calmly, like, yeah, you got it, bud. It's a four hour shift, it's really not that bad. You really can ride this one out. Still walking away, see you later, asshole, suck my dick, I'm fun and hell. I loved it, man. I'd always end it, too. I'd end the shift by taking a nice long shit on the wall. One of, one of those shits you gotta pull up the news app, start reading whole articles of it. It's gonna be, I'm milking this out, you know? But uh, what's funny, written on the bathroom stall, I'm not even kidding, written on the stall, it just said, Brooks was here, so was Red. Uh, I had a couple, it's a suicide reference from the movie Shawshank. Let me put it this way, people at Amazon had suicide on their mind. Not surprising, not surprising. But anytime I was taking one of those VTO shits, no one about to leave right after, I would just stare at it, whisper, not me, not today. Right, VTO, I'm out of here. Uh, I, I, I got a poor work ethic, man. I got a really poor work ethic. Like, I think it started back in high school football. I played football in high school. Anybody else? Football in high school? You did? What position, sir? Running back. Running back. Fuck, man. I wish I was running back. I played left bench. It was... <laughs> I wasn't very good at football. Like, let me put it this way. We had a kid with autism on our football team, very nice kid. One time we were up by a lot of points, close to the end zone. They let him run the ball in for a touchdown. Very nice thing, made his day. Also the only time I got put in the game. So, uh, uh, it was a tough day. I mean, 
What's wrong with me? That What are you hiding from me, Mom? What did you not tell me? They put me on a offensive line, too. They're looking at me now. Back then, I was 5'2", 100 pounds. They were kid. I was coming, are we trying to hurt the kid with autism? I thought, we were, I thought we were trying to be nice to him. No, it was like a prearranged thing, right? Like, they talked to the other team. We snapped the ball. The defender just stood up slowly and lightly touched me. I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. This is all I get? <laughs> Two years of practice. And of course, of course, I look over and my mom's taking a picture on the sideline. I'm like, don't do that. Not really <laughs> Only picture I have from high school football, just a guy softly touching my tits. <laughs> on my pants behind the back, like, what the fuck is going on in my life? Oh, it's weird, man. No, you can tell I haven't lived up. Uh, I haven't lived up to my dad's expectations. If you haven't picked up on that yet, <laughs> uh, I know my dad has big expectations, like big ones. Like the biggest expectation my dad ever had for me is probably when he bought me a large athletic cup. <laughs> I couldn't live up to that one. Yeah. The year I told him I was playing football, he bought me an adult large athletic cup for my birthday. I was in seventh grade. <laughs> I, I opened it up. He's like, now you're ready. Get in there, big man. <laughs> like, is that why you call me big man? You shouldn't. I thought that was, thought that was a dad thing. No, like, I, I was 4'9 in seventh grade. None of my clothing was adult large. Never mind a cop. Like, and I couldn't tell him. Like, you, you think this is my size? Are you messing me with me? What's going on? But then he made me come with him to the store to return it the next day. <laughs> Uh, even made me go up to the cashier like I just stole a candy bar. He's like, go on, tell him what happened. <laughs> like, I don't know. The cup was too big. He's like, it's right, too big. <laughs> what the fuck is this, Dad? Jesus. <laughs> but, yeah. My dad's a weird guy. He's a weird guy. He's got weird. Eyes. Like uh, my mom and dad, they went to the gay pride parade together, just showing local support. Like they're progressive people, right? The only problem I had with it was uh, my dad posted a picture from it on Facebook, and in the picture he was wearing a shirt that said, I wish my son was gay. <laughs> Brand new information to me, you know? Like, he even tagged me in the post. My name the post. Like, so I called him up, and my like, hey, dad saw the post on Facebook. He's like, yeah, isn't it a nice picture? <laughs> Yeah, no, it's nice. Makes me a little curious, though. And he's like, good to hear. That's what I wanted. And I'm like, no, whoa, hold on. No, I'm curious. I'm curious about why you have the shirt. Where'd you get that? Did you get that today at the parade? You're just supporting someone? He's like, no, I've had this shirt for a while. I'm like, that's what I, I'm, I'm confused. Not in the way he wants me to be, just generally. And yeah, I, I didn't know what to do. I, I don't know. I have no idea what it was. I guess I'm just going to be one of the few straight men that resent their father for <laughs> not accepting my sexuality. I don't know, man. So, yeah. Whatever. What else? I, uh, I parked my car the other day. I was going to just leave my car running, hop in the store real quick, grab my thing, and go back out. It was, like, right in front. But when I got out, there was a homeless dude sitting there. And uh, no, he was a little desperate looking. He wasn't one of those like harmless street decoration homeless guys. You know, like, kind of just blend in. Almost like, they're, almost like they're supposed to be there. Almost like they're, no, he was desperate looking. He had his hand on the wall. He looked like a kid before a dodgeball game. Had his hand on the wall, leaning forward. Like, oh, no. I got nervous. I thought he may take some of my shit. I locked the car. I locked the car. But right as I lock it, I look to my left. There's a group of black dudes standing there. Just standing there. But they saw me lock the car and then look at them right after. They think I locked it because of them. And I'm like, whoa, hold on. I'm trying to, like, look at the homeless company. No, it's this dude. Like, uh, but, dude, no, it's, it's fucking too late. So I got nervous. I got nervous. And I unlocked the car. And <laughs> I even put the key back in the ignition. <laughs> We're cool, man. We're really cool. But I went inside, I got back out, my car was gone. <laughs> but the homeless guy and the group of dudes both still there. It was evil. It was evil. I didn't know what happened. I found out later when I got my car back, a group of high schoolers came. Saw my car running, took it for a joy ride. High schoolers do that, right? What's the more moral of the story? I don't trust any of you motherfuckers. <laughs> Double locking my car for everybody. 
If I see like an old grandma walking down the street who can barely walk, like she's got the cane, I'm double walking the car. I don't know what she's up to. I have no idea what she's up to, man. I lived, I, you guys probably know, I lived near Fall River for a bit. People can fake a disability, okay? <laughs> you guys might not know that area. But all right, thank you guys for listening. <laughs>
We played Little League Baseball together, and then we lost touch. And I thought, well, Jesus Christ, if like through high school and college and into adulthood, I had just worked a little bit harder to, uh, to be friends with him and just be that better person. Just worked a little bit harder. Just like, you know, what is it, 5% more? Who knows what could have been changed in his life. But guys, listen, I'm not going to kill myself to keep him from killing himself. <laughs> wow. Uh, my name is Victor Duman. Uh, <laughs> Let's go back to making fun of myself. How about that? <laughs> Fucking I. 42 years old, I am. Uh, what, how old are you? 29? Man, oh man. When I was 29. Are you guys married? Not yet? Fuck no, she said. <laughs> so, when you come back next week, sit in the back. Just saying, come alone if you want. <laughs> I am 42. I did, I did recently have to start working out again. When you're 42, you got to start slow, guys. you got to start real slow. Uh, so I was like, all right, what's the slowest, what's the easiest exercise you can... Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Right? <laughs> As a 42-year-old who has not worked out in a little while, uh, it's head, shoulders, knees, knees, <laughs> knees, <laughs> knees, <laughs> belt buckle, penis, <laughs> and that's why I can't go to Planet Fitness anymore. <laughs> so, I do like to wear those little short shorts with the underwear is built in. Right? You've seen those? They're very comfortable when you're wearing them. Not so much with the people behind you. <laughs> they were gray and now they're black. Like, I don't know. Five minutes on the treadmill, that's disgusting. <laughs> I could do just about anything, right? You're gonna laugh. <laughs> oh, that's right, I did the suicide thing and you guys didn't laugh. <laughs> that's all right, that's okay. Yeah, 42 years old. Um, just so you know, the, like the secret to marriage, for those who are married here, and for those who might want to be married someday, the secret to marriage is this, because I used to be married. Um, <laughs> this is the secret, this is the, yeah, pay attention, listen up, turn your phones on, start recording. <laughs> Write this down. When your wife comes home and says, hey, uh, we're gonna go gluten-free, you don't say, I'm gonna fuck the neighbor for macaroni and cheese then. <laughs> There's a lawyer in the room, she can vouch for this. <laughs> Anyway, uh, now we, had, we got divorced, we had it all right, man. We had a couple kids and we got divorced on Halloween, but we hadn't told the kids yet. That's not the best day to get divorced <laughs> when you haven't told the kids yet. Because you still got to take them trick or treating. You got one last chance to dress up like a family. <laughs> Ding dong. <laughs> I heard her say uh, under her breath at one point, hey, uh, check that candy for razors, poison, and alimony. <laughs> I'm doing okay though, that was a few years ago now, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> now actually, uh, during the pandemic, I, you know, I had some booty calls. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I, uh, I, in honor of the pandemic, I thought, well, fuck, we got to rename the booty call. There's something better than the booty call. Like, that's just, that seems, I don't know, derogatory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's been done. It's been done. But in honor of the pandemic, I was like, you know what? Let's rename it. I got three options for you guys. I want to try to. Uh, first one is uh, Grub Hubba Hubba. That's <laughs> pretty good. Uh, Uber Eat Me. <laughs> Third one was a whore dash. Whore dash is is the winner. Thank you guys so much. The uh, the password for that app is Hello Fresh. Thank you. 
I did have a woman uh, say to me, uh, hey, uh, prime, tap in your primal urges. And I was like, ah, uh, do I really look like a guy who has primal urges to you? <laughs> I look more like an out of work Build-A-Bear. <laughs> I just looked at myself in the mirror. I look more like um, every member of the band Bare Naked Ladies rolled into one. I don't have primal urges. She's like, no, pull my hair and spank me. I said, at the same time, I'm not. I did it. I did it. I did it. You remember, uh, you remember Wilson from Castaway? Tom Hanks. <laughs> you know, uh, as we get older, I mean, yeah, I might need Viagra, right? And so, I mean, this, you know, no, sorry, I didn't mean you necessarily. <laughs> he's 29, he's a little overweight, but he doesn't need Viagra. <laughs> if he can find it, because when he runs, it goes inside itself. <laughs> That's actually me. That's what <laughs> Anyways, they found out Viagra causes melanoma. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but Viagra has been known to cause melanoma. I want to say it's the old people fucking outdoors in Florida. <laughs> that I don't know for sure. They do have women's Viagra now. They got the pink pill. Um, just like every other medication on the market, comes with side effects. Uh, you know, uh, vomiting, diarrhea, <laughs> nausea, all the things you want during sex. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, if your wetness lasts more than four hours, seek my attention. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. <laughs>